Good afternoon, monsieur. <laughs> Have you discovered something you care to try? I mean, it all looks great, but I, I like the look of this. The international specials. One moment. Why not start with these? These are chitterlings, a delicious dish from the southern United States. Quite crunchy. What's in it? Chopped pig's intestines with cornmeal fried in lard. Oh. Were you joking? No, sir, I never joke. OK. Instead of that, maybe something with less of all of those things you just said. But, of course, try this. Prahok, a staple from Cambodia made with fish. Intestines? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is you who are joking. Little joke. <laughs> OK. Quite rotten. I thank you, sir. I watched it rot myself. What was it? A prahok is fish that has been ground to a paste and then left to rot for a few days. <laughs> oh. Hmm. How about frog's legs from France? No. No, no, no. OK. How about Smith from Iceland? A sheep's head cut in two, singed to remove the fur, and then boiled. Yes, it sounds. Of course I don't want to eat that. Right. I mean, you must be joking now. Well, alas, no, sir. Al although these foods may seem unfamiliar to you, they are enjoyed all over the world. People like them. Is there anything just a bit closer to home? How about haggis oh. from Scotland? That's the ticket, isn't it? Yes, I've heard of this. Remind me what's in it again? A sheep's heart, liver and lungs wrapped up in its stomach. <laughs> Who would eat that? <laughs> <No>, nobody. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. <laughs> oh! it's so horrible. I'm Professor McTaggart, and this is my brain dump on how food becomes energy. Once food's been chewed by your teeth, it's propelled down your throat and into your stomach, where it's held in place by two circular muscles known as sphincters. Your stomach's a sort of tank, where food is mixed up and made easier to digest. Here, the food's dissolved, squashed, and turned into a creamy liquid before dripping out of your stomach and into your intestines. These are tightly coiled tubes that can be as long as seven meters. It's while traveling through these tubes that the creamy mess that was your dinner has all the nutrients and other things your body needs sucked out of it. This epic journey can take food as long as four hours, and yes, that does include hot dogs. <laughs> I'm here all week. Tell your friends. Our solar system consists of eight planets orbiting the Sun. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as well as an array of moons and small planets. Right. Which one's most likely to have aliens on it? No. Mark! Oh, for pity's sake. It's incredibly unlikely that life exists on any planet other than Earth. The planets further away from the sun are too cold, and the ones closest to the sun are too hot. Ah, come on! Yes! <laughs> you spotted that, I see. Yes, the temperature on Venus, for example, is 500 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to turn a tin can into a puddle. Bob, I, I totally think you should holiday there. Venus is also covered in choking clouds of poisonous carbon dioxide gas. Ooh, ooh. And the atmosphere is heavy enough that it can crush you flat. Oh, oh, whoa, why, why? Look how flat he is, Mark. And that's not all. You see, the clouds are also full of acid rain that could dissolve what's left of you. Uh, right, I uh, think I might just stick to Tenerife. How about sticking to the script? Call the shrinking scientist, Mark. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Let's go over to Professor Small and a team of shrinking scientists who are currently on their way to the moon. Come in, shrinking scientists. Hello, Mark. We are on our way to the moon. It should be there shortly. Still? You've been gone for ages. You can't hurry space travel. When the unmanned Voyager 2 craft travelled from Earth to Neptune, the journey took 12 years. 12 years? We've got less than 20 minutes of the show left. Chill out, Mark. Don't worry about it. Thanks to the magic of television technology, the Nautilus should get us there much quicker than that. Can one of you go outside so we can get some shots of space? Well, we would, but we haven't bought any suits. And you wouldn't want to do a spacewalk without a suit. Why's that? Well, first, there's no oxygen up here which humans need to breathe. Secondly, it's so cold it would freeze your skin in a matter of seconds. And thirdly, 
with no air to press on your body from the outside, the air inside your body would push outwards. Basically, your lungs will fill with ice and burst, and you'll suffocate. Yeah, best give it a miss, then. Talk to you shortly. Over and out. Good afternoon, and yo to all you young people out there. As an international superstar scientist, I've been pretty much everywhere on Earth, and I know pretty much everything. See that huge smudge of green across the top half of the planet? Pine trees. And those green blobs across the south? Rainforests. Basically, like someone on a mad trolley dash, plants are all over the shop. And on top of all the plants on the land, there's the trillions and trillions of algae that live in the sea. Now, if you put every living thing on Earth together and weighed it, you'd find that over 90% of this massive weight is plants and fungi. Which means that animals account for just a measly 10% of living things. And that includes overweight whales, pregnant elephants, and people who eat chips for breakfast. Double E. And that was my brain dump. Greetings, Gorehounds, and welcome to this year's Vicious Veg Eating Competition. I assume everybody's feeling hungry. Let's meet our contestants, Pink Petticoat, Cobra Lily, and Venus Flytrap. Let's declosh. We are underway. Let's meet our first contestant, Pink Petticoat, uh, so-called, because she looks like a pink petticoat. What a technique. She is stuffing little bugs up her petticoat, trapping them, and digesting them. How does it taste, Pinky? Great. All right, go nuts, go wild, go crazy for Cobra Lily. Named, of course, after her snake-like appearance. Dim with flies are flying into her mouth, never to return. Uh, yeah. uh, how's it going, fly girl? <coughs> Thank you for the insight. Looky here, old Big Mouth strikes again. Uh, this fella just can't keep his trap closed. My favorite and your favorite, Mr. Venus Flytrap. Uh, he ain't up to much yet. Uh, them bugs just resting there on his mouth parts. There we have it, his signature move. We have a winner, folks. Uh, how do you feel, Venus? That hurts. Okay, see anything you like. I'm looking to buy some meat, but I want it to be really ethical. Ah, yes. Oh, here she comes, mm -hmm. right on time. How about her? She is a Wagyu. So that means she is grass-fed, free-range, and she gets a massage three times a day. Lovely, that sounds great. <laughs> I might be happy and have fantastic tasting meat, but I'm not ethical. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what, was, what was that? Get what? this. Farm animals are responsible for the same amount of planet warming gases, CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, as all the world's cars, boats and planes put together. OK, that's enough. Don't interrupt me, Jeff. <coughs> We're all at it, us farm animals, but cows are the worst. <laughs> well, no, you don't sound very ethical to me. So I'm maybe. not. It doesn't matter how organic I am. We'd all be far better off if you just had a nice carrot. Mm. Well, you know what? I'm going to take your advice. Thank you very much. I'm going to be leaving. But goodbye. Good luck with your business. You're welcome. Come again soon. <laughs> Um, I'm very sorry, I just forgot one more thing, one small thing. Ah! A talking cow! Ah! Thanks. I know that sound. It's the shrinking scientists. Hello? Come in studio. Dr. Sensible? We we've arrived in the Arctic, Mark. We've... Shun shout! I've got my gun shout! Looks cold, though. Yes, yeah, freezing. I can't feel my nose. Oh, don't listen to these two. They're being what we call in the science world a pair of total wusses. Temperatures haven't been this high for 4,000 years. It seems to be cracking, boss. <gasps> Fascinating. You see, every summer, the ice packs get smaller and smaller, 
and this is likely being caused by global warming. Professor, there appears to be cracks showing in our relationship spatially. Uh, more of the ice melts than animals native to the Arctic will be forced to find somewhere else to live. It's, it's melting right now. OK, boss, we're actually going to have to rescue you. Oh, I'm quite OK. I'm just a short bracing swim away. Right, yeah, and by bracing, do you mean lethal? You can't swim in there. Of course I'm going to swim it. I keep a swimming costume under my clothes at all times, just in case. Don't you worry about me. I will be there in a moment. Woo! OK, may maybe I, I think you might have to rescue me. Oh, we'll come in, boss. We'll come in. OK, if you just... Yeah. Oh, that really is... That, that that really that did, I think I have frostbite on my okay, toes. Right. Okay, yeah. boss, we're going to yeah, save Give it a really... Right, give it some welly. Okay. Come on. Oh, okay, there we feeling. go. All right, good. Oh. All right, there we go. Oh. See you soon, drinking scientists. I hope. <laughs> Prepare yourself for an insane look at what they don't tell you in the science books. From inner space to the universe, we're on a case to face the worst. It's icky and it's whiffy and it's yucky and it's squishy, but we love it.